friend of mine dropped off a couple of old axes. Uh, these are used more as utility type axes. They have most of the common problems of really heavily used axes. Handle is damaged. The head is no longer well fitted to the handle. The edge is horribly damaged. I'm going to rehandle these, clean up the bits. I'm going to have to reshape this one to get rid of the really excessive bearding and get it back to a functional shape again. And even on the other one, which has still a decent curve to it, the edge is very thick from all the repeated damage. So I'm going to have to end up reshaping a bit of the bit to thin that back down. And of course do a bit of grinding on the pole because there's a lot of impacted metal down there and I want to get that smoothed out. That's that. This is one of the axes that I rehafted. Cleaned up the bit. Took most of the rust off. Um, ground back the pole a little bit, the underside. Removed most of the flays, the burrs, the little splits. I left the edge with a relatively thick and pronounced secondary bevel of around 25 degrees per side. Now, that's extremely heavy. It's twice as heavy as I'd normally use for wood cutting axe. Problem is, um, friends of mine that are going to use this use it more of a utility type axe. So this gets used for sod work, kind of heavy work like that. So I can't put a fine wood cutting profile on it. But just to show you the difference in performance, uh, this is my Brooks Wildlife which again has that edge that I was talking about. The final edge bevel is around 12 degrees per side. There's a micro bevel on top of that, but the main edge is 12. So you can see it easily carves wood. And of course this is very light. I'm not pressing overly hard. There's a harder cut. But you can see it's very easily carved. And as a point to comparison, Here's a fancier version of the Duke Duke, which of course cuts easier than the axe. But you can see the axe is not exactly horrible compared to the Duke Duke, which is about a high performance profile as you can get. Full flat grind, thin stock, very small secondary bevel, which is sharpened at uh, less than 10 degrees per side. Now, see the splitting that's happening right there in the curls? That's because the bit is so thick, it's making the wood bend past the point where it's elastic and it's just cracking and splitting along the grains. Now, again, that's a choice that I made with this because I'm trying to get durability over cutting ability. These axes, uh, this one and the other one I got the tune off from my friend, are both used really severely. Uh, when I got them back there was even caked on mud on the head. So they're sodding axes, utility axes, root axes. The poles are used to bust up concrete, that sort of deal. So again, the bit that I've put on them, while very sharp, this will easily slice newsprint, is that thick that it will tend to buckle wood rather than neatly slice it. But it will have decent chopping ability anyway. There's the other axe, rehafted. I put a handle on this, which is significantly longer than a hatchet, but not so long that it would be uncomfortable to use with one hand. This is one of my favorite lint handles. It's a bit too thick, personally, for this style and length of handle for me. But I like this because this is at the limit where you can work comfortably with it with one hand, but if necessary, 
easily works well with two hands very easy to pack very easy to carry and a lot more versatile than a one-handed axe because again very easy to use with two hands and you get significantly more reach um, not again something that you take for felling but for deadfall cutting uh, very nice now I did clean up the bit on this significantly um, as you can see before this had a much more pronounced asymmetry in the sweep I did take a lot of metal off down here to reduce uh, the asymmetry and get the curve to blend sort of back in more metal should actually come off here in order to make it perfectly symmetric but again this and the other one are going to be used very harshly uh, as utility axes and of course whenever one of your friends or family members finds out you do this type of thing you tend to get them on request relatively quickly so the next time this is dropped off uh, I think I'll clean up the bit probably a bit more and again of course if I was using this I'd sand the handle down put some coats of linseed oil on it and I'd dramatically thin out the edge so even though that it's sharp I mean this shaves and does all that good stuff the cutting ability is still very shallow because I'm after leaving the bit very thick for durability and you can see again that the wood is actually fracturing as it's being cut off and that's because the bit is so thick and you see night and day when you work with the grand first So the difference between the Duke Duke and the Grand First is very similar to the difference between the Grand First and this. That's how much of a step up uh, in durability. And again, this is more of a utility style um, axe than a wood cutting axe. No real problem in making it a wood cutting axe. All I'd have to do is drop this primary bevel hair down, probably start at around 5 degrees per side and gradually blend it back to around 12 degrees per side at the very edge and then it would look exactly like this. You can see the very wide bevel because of course as your angle goes lower the bevel width uh, increases and then so you go from around 3 to 5 to around 10 to 12 depending on wood and user skill and all that kind of good stuff. And same as on the other one, I cleaned up the pole, took off some of that impacted metal and did a bit of work around the head just to clean that up in general. But again, very serviceable. You can usually buy handles for around 8 bucks and then it's just a matter of cleaning up the head with a wire brush uh, doing any grinding as necessary and rehafting it. So about a half an hour you get everything cleaned up and you got a nice little hatchet and of course you got a couple of leftover handles that you can cut down to use for other hatchets depending like for example this one uh, in this area right here even though it's very well split and a number of other things it is possible that I could make a functional half out of this section right here the top of course is completely non-usable but the other thing is you got a nice little handle that you can use for uh, baton for splitting that kind of stuff as well. And in regards to handles, this is the old style handle that I grew up using. And you can see how it's very, very slender, very thin, very narrow compared to this monstrosity that's common on modern axes just massive amounts more wood and to me this does nothing of benefit 
it just adds more weight where you really don't want it but as quality of wood decreases and you can't get wood that lasts in this kind of profile and again you don't get the care that was when you were selecting these pieces of wood that have relatively nice straight grain with no real breakouts when you have to deal with heartwood and knots and that kind of stuff you have to really beef up the wood but a properly shaped handle like this really is a joy to use it's so light it's so easy to maneuver so I might carve the other one down or might leave it as it is, I'm not 100% sure yet.